Terminal 3 Heathrow, the UK's busiest port. Everyone who arrives here requires a valid passport and a valid reason to enter the country. Stamping passports today is Officer Steve Hassler. He joined immigration after a career in the RAF. And how long have you been away? It's his job to spot people trying to enter or stay in the UK illegally. With 50,000 passengers a day arriving at Terminal 3, he can only ask each person a handful of questions to find out if they are genuine. What are you doing in the UK? I'm a student. Where do you study? Well, I've been studying. OK, have you got your student ID card I could have a look at? This man is returning to Britain after visiting a sick relative in Dubai. To prove it's a student, he produces some university certificates. So how long have you been in the UK now? Three years. Three years. Okay, tell me about interactive business skills. What's that? Well, the, the business skills is got a um, business. It's a, it's a course literature about the business. No, no, I, I want to know. You got an A in interactive business skills, one of your exams. So tell me, what is interactive business skills? What the interactive business skills? It's, uh, interactive business skills is a skill. It's sub subject, isn't it? It is a subject. Like, well, you got an A in it, so it must have been a subject. I don't have subject, yeah. It was everything is explanation. All about the business. It's basically the business subject, isn't it? Just last October, you got an A in it. Yeah. And you can't tell me what it is. Officer Hassler asks the passenger to wait. Watch your bag. While he refers to Chief Immigration Officer Rick Lindsley. I said, well, talk to me about business interactive skills. Couldn't say a word, or the why, oh, it's business. Um, asked him about introduction of IT or cost in accounting. He says, I, you know, couldn't do anything, couldn't even mention it. He doesn't even look like a student. I pushed on the fact about his work as well, and he's like standing there, and I said, look, are you work? Are you definitely not working? And he was like, no, definitely not. I mean, he was thinking not about... Not working at all? No, nothing at all. So, so I mean, what that's... what do you want to do? Uh, certainly want to do his bag. I've got a name of a cousin who is downstairs, so I'll give him a quick call and just see if he corroborates anything he's told me as well. But he came up and he was sort of being sort of very chatty, and then sometimes you... People do that to try and sort of catch, you know, catch you off guard and stuff, you know, possibly. You get colleges, as they call themselves, or educational institutions that will provide these letters, types of letters, so people can get these resident permits. And this is what this guy's on. He came here originally on a student visa. He's then submitted documentation, probably letters like this to show that he's doing, you know, good study. But clearly he hasn't done the exam because he can't talk about it. Not that I'm a prejudging, of course. Officer Hassler may have his suspicions, but he needs some facts to back them up. Hi, uh, this is immigration at uh, Heathrow Terminal 3. He starts by calling the man's cousin. And what does he do in the UK? Student. The passenger has told Officer Hassler that he studies in London and doesn't have a job, not even part-time. So you, he works working as a taxi driver? I just spoke to the cousin and he says he works as a taxi driver, which is clearly different from what he's telling us on Who the Who works? Control. The passenger works? Yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah. It's certainly a breakthrough. But before Officer Hassler can deny the passenger entry, he needs solid evidence or a full admission. And before I start, you need to be aware it's very important for you to answer the tr the, my questions truthfully. If at any time <clears throat> I find out subsequently that you've lied to me, then it's going to make your situation far more serious here, yeah? It is now an offence to mislead and obstruct an immigration officer, okay? okay? So please think about that when you're answering my questions, right? Okay. Why have you come to the UK? For the study. Where? <coughs> School of Business Study. School of Business Study? Yeah. Well, how come you give me letters for the School of Management and Science? Yeah, I'm sorry, I am... No, 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 come on, hey, stop wasting my time. Right, I'm going to ask you again, what are you doing in the UK? Because you're not studying, you can't even get the name of the college right. My brother is very serious. Yeah, guy. yeah. I came, stop this question, yeah, simple as that, I am in a very bad situation. Yeah, okay, simple right, so Don't let's keep this simple. No, 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 I tell you what, no, I tell you what, no, no, you listen to me, right, you calm down, right, 
and you answer my questions. Because the way you're going on, you've got something to hide, right? So don't start getting on your high horse, right? And start shouting at me, all right? Did I shout on you? You were, you were getting, you were. I didn't. Okay, right then. I so, told you. Right, L listen, all you've got to do is answer my questions, right? Simple as that, all right? Okay? Right. Coming up. An enforcement team in London need to get their hands on a passport. Oh, 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 hold on. Got another photocopy of something here. The student hopeful in India who's forked out thousands on fees. If you don't understand me, you have to tell me. No. Do you understand me? And evidence that Officer Hassler's student can't be studying. But can you clarify that the person works there then? India's economy is booming. But a developing economy needs an educated workforce. And here in New Delhi, the demand for a British university degree is huge. Almost 35,000 people a year apply to study in Britain from India. It's down to entry clearance officers to choose the suitable candidates from those who don't make the grade. This man has travelled hundreds of miles to apply for his visa. He comes from a family of farmers, but he wants to study in the UK so he can go into business with his father-in-law. You have to stare at that CCTV camera for 10 seconds. Mr Singh has a lot to lose, having already paid £4,500 for his first term alone. It's my first time in UK for study. Firstly, my under, undergraduate Python program, and after uh, I finish my bachelor degree in business administration. Okay, so yeah. you're going to be a businessman. Yeah. And when you finish the degree, you're going to come back here. Yeah. And what are you going to do? Yeah, and join my family business with my father-in-law and my father's. His flight to the UK is only four days away from now. But there's no guarantee his application will be successful. Thank you so much, sir. Have a good day. Here at the application centre, Mr Singh must submit evidence to prove that he's a genuine student and that his finances are in place. OK, this is uh, your course for three years? Yes, sir. These are the savings. Yeah. It's a mountain of paperwork, but every detail is crucial. We required the sponsor's document as well. Either uh, the bank statement or the savings, the property papers, the valuation of the property, the affidavit, we required the whole thing actually. He has everything he needs, but one part of his application is not up to scratch. His basic English score is below average. If the visa team don't think he'll be able to understand his course, they'll refuse him the visa. The money spent on fees could be lost. Students who are granted visas are only allowed to work part-time, up to 20 hours a week during term. At Terminal 3, Officer Hassler's passenger still insists he doesn't have a job at all and that his studies are full-time. When were you last at your college? Sorry? When last were you last? Week. Last week? First of May. First of May? What he doesn't know is that Officer Hassler has spoken to his cousin, who lets slip that he is working. We'll be fortunate because I just asked the, the sponsor, his cousin who's meeting him, oh, what, you know, what work does he do? Um, and he's just said, oh yeah, he's a taxi driver. But when I've started asking him anything more about it, he's got a bit hesitant, realising he's maybe said something he shouldn't have done. Um, so yeah, on that information, we'll be able to go now and you know, go through the company. So it's been a good break for us. Now, Officer Hassler needs to know whether it's full or part-time employment. And the pieces are coming together. The taxi company's based in Luton. This is where this guy lives. Hi, is that uh, the taxi company? Oh, hi, yeah. Um, I wonder if you can help me. This is the UK board agency at uh, Heathrow. Um, just wonder if I could ask you a question about one of your drivers. Uh, Wa Wa Walid Hussein. So, I mean, does he come on at a particular time or is it just any time? Is that full-time work? Yeah. <coughs> Smashing. All right, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye now. Okay.
uh, contact the company and um, I've spoken to the controller there um, and he's just confirmed that, that he does work there. He's been working there full time for three years. Right. Officer Hassler still has no hard evidence. The cab company won't fax any information until they've spoken to the manager, who they can't get hold of. So he must use the information he has to get the full admission from the passenger. Are you studying in the UK? Yes. Where? I told you. I'm asking you again, where? School of management sciences. All right, do you work in the UK? No. What did I say to you about lying to me? All right? Because you have lied to me. You have family in the UK? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So don't lie to me. No, I am not lying. So tell me again, where, where are you working? I told you in so many places I will... No, no, you. where are you working now? Well, I know where you're working. You know where... I, listen, I know where you're working. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm talking to you about it now. All right? So I want you to tell me. Where are you working? Yeah. Okay, do you want me to tell you? So tell me about 49 Taxi Company, yeah? That you work there as a driver, yeah? I did work there. No, you do work there, you do work there. No, I'm not, at no. Yes, you are. Yeah, well, how come you suddenly mentioned that you've worked there and it wasn't mentioned before? No, I so don't tell me, tell me. So many places. Tell me, yeah, 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 okay. You tell, tell me, you about, three, four, you tell me about 49 Taxi Company, you tell me about it, that you yes, work as a taxi driver. I did work there. Okay, when did you start working there? I did about uh, two, three months ago, I did. Then I so you still work there? Yeah, I still work there for uh, two days. I've got it from them that you work full time mm -hmm. and you've worked there for at least two to three years. So you work there full time, yeah? Part time. Full time, yeah? No, not full time. Okay, so how come they're telling me you work full time and you've worked there for three years? There. And that probably tells me why you can't ever tell me about your college, because you're working full time. How much did you pay for those letters? I didn't pay anything. Well, you're not studying them. No, I'm studying. OK, right, what's going to happen is we're going to put you into our holding room. You'll be remaining with us. We're going to get this in document. We're going to get this writing from this company, OK? Mm -hmm. We'll get all that relevant information. And then when we've got that, we're going to take this further, OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Officer Hassler didn't get a confession. I'll explain once and the again. evidence he needs won't be available until the morning. The passenger will have to stay in the holding room. You're going to remain with us overnight? No, I can't stay in this room. I can stay on this. No, no, you will stay in this room, all right? No, I can't because I'm asthmatic. And if you've got asthma, where's your medication? Do I carry the medication with me? Mm, well, yeah, because... Oh, I don't. Well, you know, well if you, you, but if you've got asthma, why is you, where's you, where's you, where's you, 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 you... No, 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 come I back, come back. Anything. Where's your medication then? No, I It's been a sort of a frenetic few hours, but um, yeah, we've got the stage where we can't take this any further. We've got the passenger who's denying everything. Um, however, we've got this uh, verbal uh, information that states that he is working full time. So clearly we have avenues that we need to go down, uh, but we can't do that tonight. So I'll have to pass this on tomorrow morning to a, a day shift officer. Uh, and what they will do is contact this, uh, the owner of the taxi company uh, also the school as well, and just see if we can corroborate either his story or the information that we've been provided that he is actually working and not studying. In Delhi, almost 200 student applications a week are vetted at the British High Commission. For Mr Singh, who wants to study in England, this could be the most important interview of his life. His flight leaves in just three hours. Entry clearance officer Dan Brown will be taking his case. Man Singh, please. Man Singh. He's a 19-year-old student. We've no evidence that this guy speaks English, um, so we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a chat with him and see if his English is good enough to be able to follow the course. Morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine, sir. OK, sir, but if you don't understand me, you have to tell me. No. Do you understand me? Yeah. So how long will you stay in the UK? For my higher education, according to three years. Where will you study? Mm, yeah, Hertfordshire, sir. Can you tell me about the structure of the course? Um, my 
फर्स्ट माई फादर इन लो सपोर्टिंग मी फॉर फीस एंड माई रेजिडेंस एंड ऑल कोस्ट टेल मी अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द कॉस्ट इट नहीं ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी पाउंड्स ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड पाउंड्स एंड in second and third year uh, fourth semester okay let me stop you there i'll ask you the question in a different way can you tell me about the course that you will study in the uk mainly reason after uh, after um, i want to study in uk um, and after study i um, will um, join my family business and i uh, um, <coughs> Okay so if you can please take a seat at the back I'll consider your case and speak to you again shortly. Thank you. He's spending a lot of money a lot of his father-in-law's money on going to the UK and he couldn't tell me anything about what he was going to be studying and I would expect that if he's spending so much money and he's really keen on studying uh, that he'd be able to tell me something about the course and he could tell me absolutely nothing. It's not looking good for Mr Singh. Mr Singh I considered your application today but I'm not satisfied that you meet the requirements of the rules this time um so I'm going to refuse your application do you understand yes Mr Singh won't be catching his flight today instead he must explain the 4 and 1/2 thousand pounds down the drain to his father-in-law The visa system acts as a filter and strict border control stop many people getting into Britain illegally but it's estimated there are up to 1 million illegal immigrants living and working in the country it's the job of the enforcement teams to find those people and remove them from the UK first thing we initially had nine targets however um that's been whittled down to seven we got intelligence received from the management of this company that they may be employing some persons who they believe may be illegal in this country 5 minutes and we'll leave yeah london and south east enforcement teams carry out over 100 raids a week this morning they've raided a cleaning company and arrested two workers they believe are in the country illegally one is a nigerian whose visa has expired the other is from ghana But there is no record of him entering the UK. Officer in charge Sharon Kilborn decides to search the man's home. We were establishing initially that he actually lives here and the keys fit into the um, the lock. They do. So we're going to bring him up and conduct a house search in order to locate his um, passport and any other documentation. Where's your bedroom? Where's your bedroom? Upstairs. Upstairs. Bedroom's upstairs. You take him to the bedroom, yeah? Last year, 25,000 illegal immigrants were removed from the country through enforcement. But the immigration teams are not allowed by law to remove someone without travel documents. They must have proof of the person's country of origin. We've now verified that this is the um, person's room. If he gives us a passport, once we find that, we'll be out of here. The team only have a photocopy supplied by the man's employer. This gentleman has a passport. A legal authority has certified it as being a true true document. If they took this to his employer. Of course they're going to give him employment because it's been certified by a solicitor. These are the problems we have all the time. Tell us if your passport is here. Says it's searched in the whole room. Right to be I said it first to be honest. Videos. Honesty is the best. We love yeah. honesty. Yeah. We, we, we love honest, that. To be honest with you, yeah. When my brother was leaving, yeah, yeah, he told me everything in the uh, lawyer's hand. How to ever over. This gentleman here originally said that his passport was with the um, Home Office. We've done checks. It's not with the Home Office, so we're going to check his details here. And now you're saying it's with the Home uh, your solicitor, yeah? Is it? So if you're solicitor? No, I said I can give my solicitor number to you for you to ask. All right. Yeah, right. So where so where is it then? I don't have any idea. So you don't have any idea? Yes. Right. Have you reported it to police? No, to be honest. Why not? Has it, has it been lost then? So if you if you don't know where it is. Do you know what? If I had a pound for every time I heard someone lost their passport and never reported it to police, I'd be a rich woman. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Since my brother's because everything was written in my brother. I just said to you where's your passport and you said to be honest I have no idea. But you just said now it's with a brother that's not really your brother. My brother have that is he have everything. Sorry, sorry, you know what I mean? Oh, 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 hold on. Got another photocopy or something here. 
everything. It's a copy of his Ghanaian passport. Right, this was issued in, on the 1st of um, February, 07. Yeah, that's the point. Right, where thing. did you get this from? In Britain, this country or Ghana? This one. Yeah. In this country. From this when, country. Yeah, when my brother was just sending everything. So you wasn't here when you got this passport issued to you from... Yeah, from, I was here. You was here to be in honest. 2007? Yes, I was. To be honest, yeah? To be honest, yeah. 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 At the moment it looks oh, like the passport may not be here. I think... Um, so... This gentleman will probably be asked so. to report on the immigration bell. That'll be decided by the arresting officers. The team know that without a travel document, they cannot remove the man from Britain. Their only option is to grant him temporary release. But you have to report every week, you understand? Otherwise you'll have problems if you get stopped again by the police or immigration. OK? He'll be reporting to us until we can get a document and a removal date for him and then he'll be removed back to his country of origin. So for him, if he's ever um, apprehended again, there won't be no release for him. He'll be detained until he's removed. Coming up, officers in Calais check trucks bound for Britain. Five um, adult males that all claim to be from Palestine. The taxi driver, who says he's a student, appeals to the chief. I think if I gave you temporary mission, you probably wouldn't come back. I would give well, you but you don't appear to have followed our rules up to now, do you? And it doesn't get any easier for the enforcement team. Nearly a million trucks a year come through the port of Calais carrying goods into Britain. Over 400 British immigration officers work here at the French border, checking that freight is all the trucks are carrying. In 2007, officers at Calais alone stopped nearly 12,000 people trying to cross the channel illegally. Officer Gary Caldwell has been working the Calais beat for three years. It's his job to find and stop the illegal entrants, known here as clandestines, before they cross the French border. We've just received a call from um, Amos Cork Security, which is a French firm that conduct um, searches down at the, the berths here. They've, they've um, searched the lorry that they think they found five clandestines in, so we're going to make our way down now, uh, have a look at it. The clandestines may have breached the port fence and got into the lorry whilst it's been parked down here. First, Officer Cordwell must make sure that the clandestines aren't carrying any weapons. No sharps? No? No, no. Yeah? No, no. No? Okay. Yeah, what we've got is um, it's, it's a level load of, of white goods, as you can see. Um, and in a space maybe this high, across the top, um, there are five, I believe, five um, adult males that all claim to be from Palestine. We're going to move them down one at a time. We'll, we'll refer the circumstances to our CIO, uh, and then they'll make a decision on whether or not um, we, we're going to serve illegal entry papers on these people. You're first. He just said to me, everybody likes England, which is why they're, they're trying to make their way across there right now. Come on, don't worry too much about that, Wayne. It's only spitting. Please signs for correct immigration officers. Please complete... 10am. Terminal 3. Mr Rogers, you're saying? It's been a bad night for the passenger who says he's a student and claims he doesn't work. He's been detained in the holding room for 13 hours. And now officers have written confirmation from the taxi company that he's been working full time. He's refused entry and told to be put on a plane in two hours. But he has a wife and two children living in Luton. He asked to see the chief immigration officer, Matt Dyson. Sometimes I think they, they believe that if they talk to a senior officer, um, he's going to turn around and be more sympathetic. But to be honest, you know, this decision's been through two CIOs now. So it's not a decision I'm looking to overturn at all, so... But we can all see what he's got to say. Do you want to come and have a quick chat? I'm the chief, yeah? We'll just nip outside. What's up? I just want to make a request mm -hmm. that uh, 
uh, I got my wife and my daughters, two daughters are uh, in Luton, yeah. And I just want to request you personally for uh, the bill. I am not saying your decision. No, as it stands, I'm not willing to entertain any, any releasing you at the moment, okay? You can do that. If you wish you to, no. I'm not granting you temporary admission. I think that's what you're asking for, isn't it? Temporary yes. admission. Um, no, because I think if I give you temporary admission, you probably wouldn't come back. I will give you the Well, but you don't appear to have followed our rules up to now, do you? No, I've read this. The case against you is pretty strong, OK? I don't think you're studying. You don't know anything about your course. If any guarantee you want, I can bring the bill no, to three people. I can't really do that. I mean, I can understand why you're, you know, you're concerned about yeah. your Very wife and daughters. Well, no, I mean, you're concerned about your wife and daughter, but obviously, you know, I have to balance that concern with the fact that, you know, you fall well short of re-entering as a student. And also, you didn't seem to think it was a problem going on holiday and leaving your wife and daughters here, did you? No. So it's not as if, you know, I problem. think that they're in, uh, my, in any danger. My brother is dying, my, is dying with a cancer leukemia. He's fighting for his life in hospital. That was the reason I went to leave my wife and my kids. Right, and whilst I can understand you want to see your wife and, and children, I'm not going to be letting you in, I'm afraid. If you want to pursue the appeal, that's up to you. You can never divorce yourself entirely from the decisions you make. Um, but in the end, you have to look to your, your job, and you have to look what is the right thing to do according to your job. Now, you should never, ever divorce yourself from being sympathetic towards people. And just because somebody falls short of the immigration rules doesn't automatically make them a bad person. Now, this, as far as, you know, as far as we can gather, this guy is working too much and he's not studying as he claims. Okay. And his whole basis of being here and also of having a family here whom he supports is, is, is as a student. And the bottom line is if he's not doing it, then he shouldn't be here. And, you know, that, that's, that's the law and that's a, a policy made by government, not by me. My job is to apply it correctly. The passenger did lodge an appeal before Chief Officer Dyson's team could put him on a plane. After a week in a detention centre, he was granted temporary release. He's still in the UK waiting for a removal date. Back at Calais, an officer Caldwell is on a roll. There's another report of a lorry with clandestines on board. We've got three um, clandestines in the vehicle in front, believe it or not. It's gone mad. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. I need your photograph. I can come up and get it if you like. OK? And him. Come on, fella. <whistles> Nationality? Iraq? Iran? Iran. Two Iraq, two Iraq, one Iran. OK. Nationality? Iranian. Iraq, Iraq. 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 Passport? Passport, no. No, no, no papers. Passport. Papers? Papers. Let me see. Oh. Yeah. OK, from the French police. Oh, Ali Kalen? Yes. Yeah? Yes. But what we look at is, is how secure the vehicle was, uh, what measures that the drivers and indeed their companies take to prevent clandestines breaching them. So we'll speak with the drivers to establish what, the, what if anything, they've done to, to protect their lorries, and then we'll consider setting penalties if we think it's appropriate after that. Clandestines now, that we'll take their photographs and fingerprint them. We'll consider or not whether they've um, committed an offence. We'll serve them paperwork um, confirming that. And once that's done, we'll hand them to the French police who will remove them from the area. The enforcement team in London need to search the home of a cleaner they've arrested on suspicion of being in the country illegally. Come on, mate. Watch your head, yeah? Stand there. Stand there for me, mate. The man gave a false name. But officers found an ID card, and checks against this name confirmed he is from Nigeria and here on a tourist visa that expired two years ago. The gentleman says his sister, it's his sister's address and she lives on the fifth floor. We've got officers providing rear cover just in case someone throws documents out of windows. The team must find his passport. Without it, they can't send him back home. No, hold him. He can go. 
because his sister's a bit nervous of um, the law and police, and especially immigration, he's asked us to stand away from the people, or she won't answer the door, basically. If she sees his face, she'll answer it. If she sees us, she won't. So we're just waiting for her to answer the door. Don't open the door, immigration gonna arrest you. Yeah, basically. That's what he's saying. Can you let me use your phone? I'll call him. I'll call her. She I will explain what is happening to her. Excuse me. I will explain what is happening to her. She will open the door. Let me just. She will, she she just only afraid. Tell her if she doesn't open the door, we'll smash the door in. Let me use the phone. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. tell her what is happening. If there's no one in there. She might not be there, innit? Hello, Lucy! It's the home office. Open the door! We're not going to go away, so you need to open the door now! You don't want a false entry, unless we're sure, unless we're sure it's his address. We don't, obviously, we've only got the power to force entry into his address, and we're not 100% sure. So we're not, we're not too keen on kicking the door in. Is your passport in there, or is it in a different address? Is there a passport in this address? Your passport in there? You mean my, no, my passport. My yeah. passport is not, it's not here. Where is your passport? My passport is for a long time. It is has been returned to Nigeria from right. those well, who have taken it. Sunny, I don't believe you. You can check it. You know how to check it you from your to to computer. To check it by yourself. You will see everything there. Is that so what you've you got another, you're saying you've, you've applied for another visa? Is that what you're saying? You mean my visa? Why have you returned your passport back to Nigeria? It is because, you know, so, Just a, a short story, please. Why have you returned it back to Nigeria? Why? It's someone that has helped me that take it back to Nigeria. No, you no. Didn't, you know, you come here, you get a visa, right, relax, you back. get a job, yeah. you send it home, get a new visa, pretend you've gone back to Nigeria, put a fake landing state from, from someone in Nigeria, get a new visa, yeah? We know how it works. This is not a new story to us. We hear this every, every day. day. Now, where's your passport? You know, what I'm saying now, I'm very, very sure of what I'm saying. Forget about what happened in where you come and let me stop the panic. But now I'm ready to tell you the real of the, of the matter. That's okay. why I'm Where's telling your you passport? Now. My passport is not here. It's not being in this England. And I have to tell you the truth. I swear to Almighty God. The team can't get in. They've already spent eight hours on this operation. And at the end of it, two people they believe are illegal immigrants will be released. It's just frustrating because you've been out all day. It's a long, hard graft and at the end of it, you just just going to let go. Because of limited space, the Immigration Service only detains someone if they believe he poses a risk to the public or is likely to abscond. All they can do with the Nigerian is take him back to base to record his details. All right, we'll start off with your right hand, so come around here. Excuse me, sir, can I ask you a question, please? Yes. Can I commit any, of any crime in this country? Right, mean? OK, listen, mate, we're going to give you... I'll tell you why we're taking your fingerprints. I'm going to for OK, now, listen, let me explain to you. Mm. You're not legally here. Yeah, that's And right. we have the right to take your fingerprints, OK? Yeah. If you don't allow us to take them, we can take them by force, OK? It's a lot easier for you to just let us take them. Yeah. Don't go to the police. These go to an immigration database, but they go on an immigration database all around Europe. Mm. So you go to any other country within Europe, claim to be somebody else, they can test you and you'll come up when you're fingerprinted, OK? It's not that you know, maybe I've, I've committed a crime. It's crime. not because you've done a criminal offence, no. Oh, Just do what I... Go with me, yeah? Oh. Oh. I'll give you this form. It's a notification of temporary release, OK? Which basically means that we're releasing you. You need to report to this office. You need to bring this paper with you, all right? And then you come back every Wednesday. OK? You're not allowed to work right here. So the best bet for you now is probably to go to the Nigerian High Commission and get hold of a passport or a travel document and go back to Nigeria. OK? If I've been deported to Nigeria, they will kill me. If I prefer to kill me here yeah, to die in Nigeria, I prefer to kill me yeah, than to go to Nigeria and just waste my life. The man fears for his life if he goes home to Nigeria because of a feud over property with members of his family. It started after the death of his parents when he sold some property to fund his trip to Britain. I mean, 
we spoke about um, the possibility of you wanting to claim asylum, but you're not sure yet, are you? So what you need to do is go home, have a think about it, and um, whatever you think's best, when you decide when you come in tomorrow, you come into our office and have a word with someone about claiming asylum if that is what you want to do. Okay. Asylum is protection for people fleeing persecution in their own country. A claim because of a family dispute, however serious, is unlikely to be successful. Well, now he's been released, he's probably going to go home, speak to his mates. They're going to tell him, oh, no, stay away, whatnot. And lost in the system again. The man did report as instructed the following day, but he did not seek asylum and has not been seen or heard of since. The Ghanaian cleaner also reported only once before disappearing. Both men have been circulated as absconders on the police national computer. Coming up, boiling point for the Aussie chef. I'm looking red now, darling. You've been through everything. I'm not here to work. At Heathrow, a 41-year-old Australian claiming to be a tourist has been stopped at passport control. Officer Devinda Tung is suspicious because the woman has limited funds and can't tell him what she wants to do while on holiday. The passenger is a chef, and Officer Tung believes she may intend to work in Britain. What she's carrying in her luggage raises suspicions further. She's just informed me that she's got some special luggage that she's checked in, which she said were her chef knives. Now, when asked why she needed them, she said she was going to do some cooking for her uncle. Um, should, should we, is that all the baggage that you have at the moment? Yeah, my knives are in the fragile. Your knives are in the fragile. OK, we'll, we'll go and grab your knives. OK, I'm just going to have to take this away from you as well, just, for the, just whilst we're conducting our inquiries, OK? I can't let you have this, and then I'll return it back to you afterwards, OK? Officer Tung must search all the woman's bags to find out if she is a genuine tourist. In with her laptop, he discovers several copies of the woman's CV. We also have uh, copies of her educational certificates with her. Uh, she's got copies of them. I mean, it, it's, it's strange, you know, someone bringing educational certificate CVs uh, coming for a holiday. At her age, 41, she, she's too old to get a working holiday maker visa to come here through that channel. Um, not, I haven't looked at her qualifications exactly, but you know we've got the new points-based system, so maybe she doesn't qualify for the points to get the right work permits to come over. So you know they're left with no other option but to come and see country as a visitor and then work illegally. And can I ask you what this is? What's this? It's a CV that I use how I get work in. This is what I, how I send to my employers. This goes electronically. Whose CV is it? Mine, Robin Cameron's. Why are you bringing them with you? They're always in my, in my laptop. They're always there. They're always there? They're always in my bag, my, yeah. So many copies? You've got, I've, I've, you've got about 25 yeah. copies of your covering letter. Yeah. And there must be maybe the same amount of CVs. Yeah. When I'm looking for work, that's what I send them. Always looking for work, but you always get bits and pieces. You're always work. looking for work? Yeah. Why are you carrying your chef knives with you? Because I'm going to cook some food for my friends while I'm here. I take them everywhere I go. Can you not use their knives to cook no, food? No, because they're blunt. You always cut. No. Why not? No, because people are Because you're only going to cook for friends. How many friends I, do you have here? You have... Yeah, but even when I'm at home in Sydney, you have I an uncle. To house. Yeah, yeah, you have an uncle to cook for. Yeah. And you have Julie to cook for and another... Yeah. So there's three people. I don't like using anyone else's knives. It's, just, it's a personal thing that I've had my own knives. People's knives are normally blunt. OK. I mean, looking at what we've, done, what we've looked at so far, everything suggests to me that you're coming to the United Kingdom to seek and take employment here. But I can't. I can't get a working visa here. Yeah. No, I can't work here. But no, everything suggests oh. to me that you are, because, I mean, why else would somebody carry a CV with them? You have three friends here. Yeah. And you've bought your chef knives to cook for them. But if you could understand it, what it's... I, I do understand, but... The chefs are like, 
an unsafe. You're not cooking, unless you plan to cook in a professional kitchen, you don't need to bring your knives with you. If I go to my dad's house, I take my knives. If I go to anyone's house to cook, right. I take my knives. So do you have any intention of working here? No, I don't. Right, okay. What did she say about the knives and the Not, certificates? Well, she, certificates, she said, well, she always carries them around with her wherever she goes. She's always looking for work. I said, you're always looking for work. You're planning to work here? No, I'm not planning to work here. I, I don't buy this thing about taking your chef's knives everywhere no, you, you yeah. go. Um, and you don't take your certificate. No, you when don't. did you last take yours and on holiday? No, no, and it's not just one. There's, there's a few copies of each. It's not just like, you know, she's got a different coloured one. Here we go. This is her CD. Oh. That's her, yeah. No, she's looking for work, isn't oh, she? Oh, she's definitely looking for work, yeah. No, sorry. Afraid. Yeah, I've Afraid. checked RDs. There's a flight out tonight at um, 2100 or something. Fitting well? Yeah, she's fitting well. This is for you, your, your reasons for refusal. Um, this also gives you your flight that you're going back on. So you're going on the EY to Abu Dhabi, connecting on all the way to Sydney right. tonight. Okay. Okay? Um, your passport and stuff will be held with us. Uh, when you board the flight, uh, my colleagues uh, who will escort you to your flight will then hand the passport on to the cabin crew who will then give it to you when you land. There's no, nothing I'm, I can do. Unfortunately not, no. This is so wrong. I've worked my ass off to get here. I'm a chef. I make 25 bucks an hour in Sydney. I've worked that hard. Look, you've read my diary. You've been through everything. I'm not here to work. Okay. Well, everything that you've brought with you suggests that you are here and your intentions are to seek employment here in the United Kingdom. You can keep all that. No, um, th that's, that's not going to stop you. I know. I, I just grabbed my laptop. I didn't, that's, my laptop had mm. recipes in it. She didn't take okay. it too well. She, she'd spent a lot of money. I mean, it, it didn't seem as if she, she had limited funds to her anyway. Now, you know, someone wouldn't spend all that money to come here just for a trip if they didn't have it. I mean, there must have been more intentions to her coming here, like to work so she could earn some more money. So I, I think that was the right decision. I worked my ass off for the last six months to come to this country to have a holiday. I brought my knives, I'm a chef, I'm gonna cook for my friends, and they've refused me entry into this country. It's just so wrong. You know, he wants me to bring my family. My family just had the biggest party for me to leave yesterday, and now I'm gonna bring him with the child and come home. So I'm embarrassed and I'm upset, I've done nothing wrong.